country is that? Okay, uh, January 5th, 2015, this is a very unique case of a 14-year-old male dog, a multi poo coming in nearly four weeks ago without, with great difficulty in breathing. In fact, he can't breathe. I thought he was going to die because, as you can see, this big swelling goes under the neck as well to the lower part of the neck, obstructing his, uh, his uh, breathing uh, tube, his breathing trachea. So, as you can see, this swelling is about 6 inches times uh, 3 inches and uh, the dog was practically uh, at the threshold of death due to the fact that he just couldn't breathe. So, what was the diagnosis? So, the diagnosis tentatively was has based on this location is right submandibular, right submandibular abscess. The reason I say it's abscess is because it's based on blood test results of a very high white cell count and high neutrophil plus low platelet. So this dog was actually suffering from septicemia or bacteremia. Now what happened was this dog had a right ear infection for several months and uh, the, there was no uh, cure, came on, came on having passed there. So finally it led to the stage whereby from my hypothesis the, the bacteria might have gone down gone down to the mouth and into the submandibular lymph nodes and then it spread to become a big painful abscess. Now if we take the x-ray, now this x-ray, the lateral view, it clearly shows that this abscess is gigantic, you can see. And this is a this is where the oxygen goes in, the, the breathing. So it blocks the the breathing, the air intake. So that's why the dog was panting and, and uh, couldn't stand up and was very thin and not eating. So this is actually 14 year old multi pool, firm painful swelling. It's the right submandibular area. Now we, we do a ventral dorsal view, you can see this is the right side and definitely you can see this is the right submandibular area and this uh, looks very much like abscess, it's, it's spread, spread across the throat and, and of course it goes upwards and obstructing the flow of uh, this is the trachea, the windpipe it blocks the windpipe so so from here, this is 14 years old so this is mis in error so the pain, Disney and pain, difficulty breathing and painful massive submandibular swelling I mean right, the dog's is almost about 3 quarters of his uh, the neck and uh, this was December 9th, nearly about uh, four weeks ago. Now it's January one, uh, 5, 2015. You can see the total white cell count is 69 from the blood test. Should be 6 to 17. Neutral field 98%, 60 to 70 the normal. And then absolute numbers of neutral fields, 67. Normally it's 3 to 11. Now the platelets are 142, which shows that this dog is septicemic. And this why I say it's on the threshold of death. Now, the, if not treated, you will have died. So the urine bacteria is 3 plus and protein 2 plus, so there's a urinary tract infection. So the bacteria has gone to the urinary system. Now, the vet had given eye drops some weeks ago, but the, the dog still had passed for about six months. So this could be the source of the bacteria and on the right ear as well. The right ear was the main complaint. So right and right. So, so everything is related to the right side and uh, so the diagnosis is based on lab tests and x-rays with a submandibular abscess. Now a biopsy was done, biopsy was taken and sent to the lab, there was no cancer, no tumour. Yeah. It's a biopsy punch put into the lump here and uh, so now today is about, a biopsy was here, I just get two, two two uh, biopsy punches in and here and here and send the lab so there was no cancer cells so now today is about four weeks later I'm, I I will show you the dog who is back to normal okay now we go out and see the dog is back in here for our okay now we see the dog right hand side you see, you see the dog is here and now just sit down and then you just lift off the head it's, it's quite long, it's quite long. you see the swelling is no more 
Oh, yeah, the submandibular yeah. swelling. Yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't touch him because he's angry with me. Mm. But you can see the submandibular swelling. No, 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 no. It's just the nose, look at the side of the nose. Let's see, 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 outside, outside. Uh, but you, see, no. you can see, see the outside. owner. Uh, uh, see this swelling was here last time. Okay. Also, no more. No, yeah, and he. Ah, uh, you see? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. now the ear also no more infected. Yeah. Ear no more infected. Yeah. And now he can even bite me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> now you see the teeth. Now the thing is that another reason could be the teeth further back a bit. Yeah. If further back, uh, you see, it's full of tartar. This will be where the bacteria is inside the gums. Okay. And so today we are going to remove all the tartar. Okay. And then uh, he should have no more bad breath. And uh, in fact, today he has uh, gained weight. Uh, about, uh, uh, he had this sore throat, so I suspect it's the bacteria from the the mouth, the tartar, colonizing the throat. So with removal of this the tartar, most likely he would be uh, much better. His throat is much better. Uh, so this is a good case for you because you will not see again. Especially